going to start the first chapter of IGCSC economics. So, what is the first definition you must learn? The first definition you must learn is what is economics? Economics is a study of human behavior where we deal with deals to fulfill unlimited wants with scarce resources. And now we must analyze what does it really mean. Here in economics, we deal with human behavior. Have you ever imagined why you have what you have? Why can't you have everything you want? Human wants are unlimited, infinite. If you have a large house, you will opt for an even larger house. If you have a large car, you will, have, you will want even a better car. There is no limit or finiteness to wants. On the other hand, the resources you have are very scarce. You receive a specific amount of money. You have a specific amount of money which is spent on goods and services. You cannot have everything. Here, economics deals with how we fulfill our unlimited wants with the scarce resources we have. Economics also analyzes human behavior, how human acts on incentive. For example, if one supplier reduces its price, the human incentive will tell him to purchase from the lower price suppliers. On the other hand, if prices are rise, people will stop purchasing those goods. People act on incentives and economics analyzes. Economics is an analysis of a whole human behavior, a whole, whole human behavior and how unlimited ones are satisfied with scarce resources. This is the first definition you are going to learn. Second is scarcity. What is scarcity? What if there was unlimited resources and you could have whatever you want? Then there was no problem. For example, let's take oxygen. It's an infinite amount. People, there's enough to satisfy everybody's one. So there's no price attached to it. On the other hand, this goods such as diamonds are highly priced, but it has not it's not even necessary. It is not even a necessity. So why is it priced so highly? Because there are very few in amount, and the demand is very high. When there is not enough to fulfill everybody's want, the this is known as scarce scarce resource, and Goods which are plentiful amount and do not have to be paid for or do not and uh, there is enough amount for everybody is known as free goods such as oxygen. There, there you go, the definitions for scarcity. Let's go to the next page. Okay, now the third definition we come to opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is the best alternative for God. And what is the best alternative for God means? It is if we do a particular task we sacrifice something else. For example, if you are reading a book, you are sacrificing maybe playing outside or going out with friends. If your parents give you $500 to buy a phone and you sum up three phones such as S4, iPhone or Nexus 5 and you at last decide to buy an iPhone, then you sacrifice the other phones. The phone you sacrifice, for example the S4 you sacrifice buying for buying an iPhone is known as the opportunity cost of buying an iPhone. And the an example that my teachers gave me when I went to study, study was once a man was walking and he saw a lamp 
He rubbed the lamp. And then a genie came out. When the genie came out, he said, You have one wish. The person told, Give me another thousand wishes. The genie slapped the man. The genie slapped the man. And told him, You have only one wish. And you can only want one wish. Then he summed up three things. He thought, I can have the money of Bill Gates the strength of Undertaker or the looks of Tom Cruise. After that, he thought that the strength of Undertaker may not be required, that he can hire, hire bodyguards with the money of the Bill Gates. After that, when he summed up to the smartness and the handsomeness of Tom Cruise and Bill Gates, he thought that if I have the money, then girls will be anyhow attracted. So he told the genie, give me the money of Bill Gates. So he sacrificed the looks, the personality of Tom Cruise, choosing the money of Bill Gates. There was an opportunity, had an opportunity cost of looks of Tom Cruise. This is a definition which, this is an example my teacher gave me and I found it very interesting, very amusing and it was quite nice. Okay, now let's go to the fourth uh, definition is known as consumer goods. Consumer goods are goods which give static satisfactions and are bought for their own sake. Now what does that mean? Consumer goods are goods we consume, such as when you eat a bed, we get direct satisfaction from it. We don't buy it for a purpose, for any other purpose, such as when we buy a pen, we write with it. It does not give any direct satisfaction, but with that pen, we write, and that creates utility. But food, we consume it, and it just gives direct satisfaction to us. And examples are bread, juice, capital goods. What is capital goods? Capital goods are goods which are not bought for their own sake, but for the sake of other goods. For example, you, the example I gave of the pen, it can be used as a capital good because it is not, it does not give any direct satisfaction, but it used to be another, used to produce another good. Uh, such as machineries. Machineries do not provide satisfaction to any consumer, but it's used to be consumer goods. It's totally the opposite of consumer goods. Not really the opposite, but yeah, you need capital goods to produce the consumer goods. Now we come to a definition of public goods. What is public goods? Public goods are goods that are non excludable non rival and free for all. When you go through the roads with the with your car, have you ever witnessed that you are not really charged for the street lights? Why are why are you not charged with the street light? Because they are public goods. Because one person needs it and other 